From your other interviews, we know that uh, the book, The Adventures of Jonathan Gallagher, Free Market Odyssey, was basically born out of a frustration to teach people some free market economics. So can you tell us more about uh, where where we are today with, with this, uh, with the book and well, the uh, the, the, the book originated as a, a series of radio commentaries here in Hawaii, and I did them up in Alaska before coming back here and publishing them as a book. And um, it, it has really uh, hit a, a chord in other countries, even more so than in the United States. There is interest in the United States, and there's uh, been a number of copies that have been published, but the, the biggest uh, audience that has perked up for this has been uh, internationally. Maybe you can see that uh, I've got a lot of uh, editions. It's now been published in 45 languages. Uh, still coming in this week will be uh, the French edition. Uh, but we've got them from all over the world. We've got Arabic, and we've got uh, Mongolian, and Kiswahili, um, and across Europe. Uh, Europe has been probably the most prolific in producing books, and I have to thank Tomislav Kursmanovich in uh, Belgrade uh, for his help in finding people throughout the Balkans and arranging translations of the books in uh, uh, Slovenian mm -hmm. and, uh, well, I can't recognize all the languages off, okay. uh, off let, the let, hand, let, but let maybe you can. Yeah. Uh, this Croatian. is in Croatian. Yeah. And maybe then uh, this one was um, uh, Ljubljana, so oh, Slovenian, okay. so the first Slovenian, Slovenian edition. Okay. And we did uh, a Romani edition. Roma edition? Um, that's right, Roma, okay. uh, the Roma? Gypsy, Gypsy edition. Language. Oh, that's right. Nice. And uh, Serbian. This Serbian, was the earliest uh, of editions. Nice. And perhaps you can recognize the... Uh, this is Montenegro here, it says. Montenegro. Okay, it's in Cyrillic. Uh, here's a uh, Bosnian edition. Mm -hmm. Oops. And I guess this may be... Uh, uh, I think this is Macedonian. Yeah. And Macedonian right mm -hmm. here. And uh, so then we also had uh, Czech, uh, Bulgarian. Actually, many of these languages have been published more than once. Those are basically uh, improvements in translation. Yeah, and sometimes and they're graphics as sometimes well. they're graphics, but also it's uh, sometimes they're commentary editions. Because in English, not only do we have the uh, the English edition, um, basics the story, but we also have a commentary edition. This one was first published in the United Kingdom in okay. South um, uh, South Africa, actually. Uh, but it's an English edition with commentary with every chapter of the book, uh, no illustrations. Um, and we now have a new uh, Polish edition that, uh, with, with beautiful illustrations that's now being translated, I mean, being adapted to the English that has just been published. Uh, so I'd say there's a lot of appeal. We've even had it produced in plays. Um, in Nigeria and in Slovakia, it's been produced into plays. We have had... Uh, a woman, Susan Wells, who produced a screenplay for the movie version of the book, um, but uh, we haven't yet gotten off the ground with a with a movie. One day, one day we'll have it on on a silver screen. Okay. Um, since politicians nowadays never seem to stop amazing us with all the great new stuff that they basically annoy us with, uh, I guess you have plenty of new uh, inspiration <laughs> coming for maybe some additions to the to the book. Yeah, there's always um, new ideas for, for new chapters. Some people say, well, what more, more ideas can you write about? And I said, well, there's uh, every day in the newspapers filled with mm -hmm. lots of uh, stories that you can satirize. Right. And that's the beauty of this kind of approach. Satire is the greatest way of getting around the barriers, whether it was in the Farsi edition to get past the mullahs in, in Iran so that uh, they would allow free market talk uh, in uh, one of the most repressive countries of the world. Or whether it was, uh, you know, just in uh, schools where you have to get past uh, censors before you're allowed That's into right. the classroom, and uh, so s satire has always been, I think, one of the best ways of talking about freedom in an unfree world, and uh, so I have a lot of hope for that. And also, we wrote, I wrote the book as a um, kind of a an undated story um, of an older time, but it it. I try not to make it seem like it's only just to this particular issue right, so that people will apply the principle to any issue that comes up year after year after year. And that's why this book has been somewhat timeless. It's now uh, in 23 years that we've been uh, doing this book and uh, 
And uh, everywhere I go, people say, well, how long have you been living in Poland that you understood all of our, our issues? And I said, well, I wasn't really writing about Poland. I was writing about Hawaii, but these issues are pervasive and universal. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about some of the economic issues, some of, uh, some of the economic principles that the book is talking about? Like Good in point. Some of the stories? Yeah, well, well like in particular, as, the one I like yeah. is the toll tax. So can you tell us what that story <laughs> yeah. teaches you about? Yeah, yeah, right. Well, <clears throat> Jonathan's wandering through this uh, street. He's, he's kind of like the little prince in, in the story of the little prince or Gulliver's Travels. He's wandering through and just asks questions. And people, by their really strange and bizarre behavior and, and answers, uh, reveal a lot about society and people's uh, normal uh, activity. And he runs across this guy who's walking on his knees. And he's in a lot of pain. And it's uncomfortable and it's slow. And Jonathan offers to help him up. And he says, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm trying to avoid the tall tax. And Jonathan is uh, puzzled by this. What do you mean, the tall tax? Well our society, we decided it was unfair for some people to be taller than others. I mean, there are all kinds of advantages that go by promotions and jobs and, and politics and marriage. And so there should be a penalty for taller people. They would be taxed more. And you can avoid this tax by walking around on your knees. And if you can really get it low, by crawling. Wow. And so, <laughs> so Jonathan is uh, essentially seeing this really strange behavior of human beings, they shape their lives to the tax code. And you ask people almost anywhere in the world, has the tax code affected your behavior? At first they might think no, but then they give it some more thought and they think, well, yeah, I, I bought this house, I bought this uh, car, I, I did these things because of certain tax advantages or tax breaks, and, and so really their, their lives are shaped by the, the tax code. Which is ironic, because if you ask people what do they think about the politicians that are making these roles? Do they have high moral standards or low moral standards? I mean, universally, when I ask this kind of question, almost everyone says, well, the politicians are scoundrels, they're, they're dishonest, they have low moral standards. But when you put them all together into a room to make laws for the rest of us, to determine what our values should be, people seem to nod in agreement that, oh, it must be good for, for our good, that, that the politicians have shaped our values right. through the tax code and uh, so many other ways, too. Uh, regulations are more direct, but the tax code is a very subtle form of, um, of manipulation. And so that's, that's one of the chapters in the book. Yeah, and we will let our viewers uh, read the rest of it and find out what's it all about. <laughs> There's an English commentary book available for free online. That's right. Uh, at the present, you can, you can view it, a um, uh, free download from jonathangullible.com on the page about uh, language editions. Actually, you can get a free download in about 30 different languages. 30 different languages, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. I think uh, Tomislav has provided all of the Balkan languages. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think uh, I have found online. it somewhere, but yeah. I think it was on, on a different website, not on the oh. Jonathan oh, website, okay. so maybe we will link that. Yeah, sure, sure. sure it's yeah. There. Okay, Very great. glad to do that. Yeah. You know, when I think about uh, Jonathan Gullible, mm -hmm. I'm really thinking this could have been Ayn Rand's John Galt in his youth. So was that sort of an inspiration for you? Well, that's a good point. Uh, it's been pointed out to me before because J.G. is Jonathan Gullible and it's John Galt. Okay, yes. Uh, maybe subconsciously I had that mm -hmm. in mind. How long, uh, how long ago did you read the book? The Atlas, Atlas Shrugged I, I read in the early 1970s. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm uh, old, now mm -hmm. 62. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, that book made a very, very profound impact on me. Um, and I'd say that Ayn Rand's uh, philosophy of individual liberty was something that really propelled me towards um, acting on this kind of philosophy. Uh, other greats, I, I was very much impressed by Milton Friedman, uh, even more so by his son uh, David Friedman, um, uh, Murray Rothbard, Friedrich Hayek, von Mises, uh, all these uh, great Austrian economists. Uh, but, but Ayn Rand reached out in a very passionate way through the novels. And that's what I think is going to be the effect of this book. There's a role for many different kinds of academic works, but the role of the fiction work is to reach out to people who aren't so much interested in the academic world, but are right. still very much interested in and the ideas. And Jonathan Gullible has gotten some really good reviews and some real praise. 
Well, uh, yeah, we've gotten some uh, endorsements by Milton Friedman. I was, uh, I was very much appreciative of that. Uh, but also uh, Walter Williams, a renowned uh, free market economist from George Mason University, um, and uh, uh, Steve Forbes of uh, Forbes magazine has endorsed the book. Uh, John Stossel, the renowned uh, journalist uh, uh, in the United States, uh, and uh, Mark Skousen. So yeah, we've we've gotten some very nice acknowledgments. Actually, everybody that I've asked for uh, endorsements has given it.